Hello, this is Ghost, and welcome to another scary video. This story was originally made by CryptoNovage titled, So I found a flash drive at the bus stop, and what's on it is, well, Lock your doors, and turn off the lights. Enjoy. So, here's what happened. I'm at the bus stop, right? Just heading home. And on the ground I see a flash drive just lying there. So I pick it up, ask any of the other people at the bus stop if it's theirs, and all of them say it isn't. So I shrug, pocket it, and take it with me. I get home, and I check what's on it, and it's just a bunch of graduate level schoolwork and also a doc file entitled Diary. I click that and, well, I don't really know how to explain this or what to say, so I'll just post the contents here. My diary, or my quest to make friends. January 3rd, day one of my first day back at school. In day one of my determined quest to make friends and form deep and close relationships. We'll see how it goes. For anyone reading, I am a 32-year-old graduate student at a major university. I study sociology, specifically wealth disparity and its impact on the national political structures. I could recommend any number of books on the subject and talk a bunch about them too but I presently have no one who's interested in either of those prospects, at least with me involved. But I hope to change that. Today I woke up, did my usual routine, shower, dressed, breakfast, etc., then headed out of my apartment, transited up to the campus, and then jogged over to my classroom to perform a function as a teaching assistant to the class. SOCI 1101 Introduction to Sociology Taught by the amazing Dr. Robert Takahara Dr. Takahara is a brilliant man, with tons of books published on various topics relating to politics and current events. Last I counted, it was well over 40. And he's an excellent educator as well. I aim to become an academic like him. I taught the class, then headed to Alberts Hall to wait outside the lecture theater for one of my master classes to start. Outside the class was classmates of mine. Perfect. I walked up and listened in on the conversation. They were discussing Iron Man 2, which had come out the year before in 2010. I made some contributions to the discussion, but their responses to me bothered me. They gave... Uh, how do you describe it? They gave the bare minimum required in their response, then resumed talking to each other without even integrating what I had said into the conversation. I tried again, got the same deal, and this continued for about 10 minutes, at which point I gave up. I ended up moving to the other entrance to the classroom and playing on my phone until class started. More work to be done in relating to people better. I suppose. Maybe I just wasn't familiar with the movie like they were. <sighs> January 6. Didn't do much today, but still had an interesting bit of time lately. Made it home late last night. Too late. I was late with some work of mine not school, more like a personal project, and had to rinse and launder my clothes. My muscles were aching too. I do such hard work in these areas, and it's starting to take its toll. Fortunately, I probably won't have to do that route again for a number of reasons. Anyways, I was surfing the internet and found a posting for a show downtown like a music show with a local band. Intrigued, I saved the details to a Word document 
and posted it on Facebook asking if anyone wanted to come, tagging a few people in particular. The show is a week and a day from now, so we'll see if anyone responds. Here's hoping they do. January 11th. No replies to my Facebook post, even though the people tagged are very active elsewhere. Oh well, I guess they're busy. Went to the Starbucks today with my laptop and a notebook to get some work done. Tried to make some small talk with the barista, and later the person sitting next to me. They weren't that interested in what I had to say. And in one instance, the person got up and walked away as I was talking. It was very rude. I wonder if I offended him in some way. But, in other news, I have high hopes for the new disposal methods I've thought up and arranged for in the various areas of my network. Also, following up from a previous entry, unfortunately I had to burn the clothes from the night of the 5th. They were dirty enough that I wasn't able to clean them. January 13th. No replies to my Facebook posting, even though everyone is chatting away and scheduling stuff with other people. I'm starting to get really offended. I think the least they could do is just tell me they aren't busy. It's just hurtful. Anyways, looks like I'll be going to the concert alone. Oh well, it's not all bad. I might make some new friends, or at the very least, find a new project. January 15th. The show was great. The music was amazing and the crowd was full of energy. I tried to make conversation with a few people, but no one was really interested. The ones that did talk to me, they seemed well, frightened, almost, even though there was no reason for them to be frightened of me. I'm fucking sick of this, and I'm starting to get sick of dealing with people. What is it about me? What's the point of putting myself through this when this is what people are like? <sighs> but enough about that. I found a new project. He was a handsome young man college-aged, black hair down to his shoulders and cool clothes. I watched him carefully through the night, and when he left, I managed to follow him home. To my luck, he dropped his wallet, which I picked up. Again, what luck. I headed back to my apartment. January 18th. Worked on school stuff. Then, when I was finished, relatively early, about 2 in the afternoon, thanks to me getting up at 6 in the morning, I dedicated myself to my two main tasks, making friends and working on my new project. First, I googled a bunch of clubs at my university to see which ones I could join and meet people in. One hit my eye. Fellowship of Christian Students. I did some more digging. It's a campus ministry branch of an evangelical parachurch group. Evangelical Christian Fellowship. Typical evangelicals. Not culty. Not crazy. Christians are nice, right? I copy pasted the details of their next get together. January 25th, a Tuesday, to my Word document for this kind of thing. And then, having been completed, I went to work on my next thing. I looked at the ID card of this guy who I was following. Matthew Latimer, born 1993. Student at a local community college, which one isn't important. I went through his wallet and found mainly miscellaneous bullshit. But I did find something important. The password to his email account. Bingo. We'll see where this goes. January 20th. Not much to write about on my quest to make friends. The next big push for that is on the 25th. 
with the student fellowship. Though, I did read Carnegie's book on how to win friends and influence people, and I practice conversational skills in front of the mirror. I think I'm getting better. I read through Matt's emails, and I figured out a plan of how to get him alone. I'm going to put it into action in four days. All I need to do now is go about my daily routines and wait. I'm getting pretty excited about this, to be quite honest. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm certain of this because all of my projects are a lot of fun, despite being hard work. January 24th. Plan went off without a hitch. I ambushed him as he was walking to the subway station through an alley downtown. Got him in my car, and about half an hour later, we were back at my secret place. I did the necessary routine preparations, then when he was awake, went to work. I tried some new and exciting things tonight. I've decided to start superheating the knives I use because I think it has an effect. His throat cut up and so easily with it, and he screamed so much louder. Yes, I know, flesh isn't butter. But still, I think there's something to this. I've also started making a game out of getting organs of my projects out. Sometimes I take them out delicately, as if I'm a surgeon. And other times I just rip them out like I'm a madman. It's better when they're still alive when I'm doing this. I mean... You can practically feel them trying to get their screams out past the duct tape, but it never works. About an hour of work, I was finished, and the only one left in the room. I mopped up the blood, unshackled the body, which, on the note, I have to clean the chains as he struggled so much he bled against them. <sighs> and dissolved it in the acid bath. It really is an excellent disposal method. Leaving, I felt invigorated. Projects always make me feel alive. I also reflected on which one this was. Ninth? No. Tenth. How could I lose track? I always remember my wonderful projects. Not much left to do now, but wait until the big get-together tomorrow. It's gonna be a new day for me, I'm sure. I've practiced my conversation skills. I've carefully selected my wardrobe. I've looked up interesting new items on the internet to make small talk over. And I'm reminding myself to ask people about themselves rather than just talk about myself. I do think, honestly, that life is what you make of it, and if you approach it with a positive outlook, nearly anything is possible. If you liked the video, please press the like and subscribe button. I do appreciate all of the support. If you have any suggestions for future videos, leave a comment below. I read all of my comments. Thanks for watching, and have a safe night.